A comprehensive model of the human brain does not yet exist. And for me, a comprehensive model is a detailed model. So it not only contains the neurons and their connections, but also it places the brain into its natural environment, the body. We've started by building a virtual mouse brain and putting it into a virtual mouse body. Our software works in two steps. In the first step, we take open source data sets on the mouse brain and from this it generates semi-automatically a brain model which we can simulate. In the second step, we connect this brain model to a virtual mouse body, such that, for example, if you touch the whiskers of the mouse, you will see the activity in the mouse brain in the right places. A model is a tool for data integration. That is, all the data has to coexist in the same model. And the best illustration for this probably is how the first globe was created. That was in 1492 by a guy called Martin Beheim in Germany. And he literally had to take all the maps that merchants and sailors had collected and arrange them onto an empty globe. And in the end, he had a first comprehensive view about the land mass of the Earth. This exercise had two benefits. The first one is that you actually have a globe, which didn't exist until then, but also he learned what we know and what we didn't know about the world at the time. In the same way, we will work towards the human brain. We haven't done the human brain yet because today's computers are simply not powerful enough. A mouse brain has only 75 million neurons. A human brain however, has a th is a thousand times bigger. So current computers are simply not powerful enough. Of course, initially or now, these models are still very coarse, but with every new data set that we are getting, so in every iteration, these models will become more elaborate and more realistic.